Laddie was entrusted with the duty of becoming a maiden. Thanks to her talent, she was loved by all. But it was a false love. No one would truly love someone who was destined to disappear. When people discovered she hadn't the makings of a maiden, they stopped caring for her, and she descended into the darkness of desolation. After defeating the shadow, you use the maiden's relic to heal the heart scar. You successfully restore the town and heal the wound on Laddie's heart. Your mission fulfilled. You decide to return to the world you came from. Here to stay the night? The innkeeper asks the moment you set foot in the inn. With the door opened by the self-proclaimed spirit spell, you leave the heart's domain behind. Upon your return to your original world, 
Lanka and Krim look weary from their unbelievable experience. Laddie, meanwhile, is fast asleep on the floor again, recovering from her sudden change of heart. Her sleeping face, which you'd seen occasionally at the grotto, seems to have softened a bit from the anguished way it looked before. Thanks to the Ivory Maiden and her attendant, you've accomplished your mission. You prepare to take them back to the North Isle. The chest continues to bob along in the waves, drifting off to who knows where. As you make your way ashore, you see an impeccable line of soldiers in white armor awaiting you. A welcome party, Lack asks, though the atmosphere is far from welcoming. In accordance with national decree, we have come to apprehend the rebellious maiden, the soldiers say, pointing countless blades at you. According to the soldiers, allowing the masked soldier to escape in the forest was a huge infraction of national decree. Lanka hangs her head. Apparently, national decrees are matters of utmost importance to maidens. A soldier who appears to be the squadron's captain claps Lanka in restraints. The maiden must be educated, the captain says. Dispose of the others, including the attendant. Fight them all. Fortune favors the bull.
After defeating the soldiers, you spot neither hide nor hair of Lanka. According to Krim, the maiden will likely be taken to the foundation, a school beneath the palace, to be educated. You begin walking toward the palace in hopes of saving the maiden, dragging along the faint attendant. Lanka, she murmurs, oh, Lanka. The attendant mutters, but to who, you cannot say. Pitiful. Just pitiful. His miserable murmuring gradually melts into tense silence. A man bumps shoulders with you as he attempts to rush past. I'm so sorry, I'm late for my match, he exclaims, completely flustered. He hurriedly explains that he's on his way to the arena where the strongest in the realm are gathering to compete. If you think you stand a chance, why don't you join the tournament, he suggests, then dashes off. A number of warriors are gathered around the Crimson Maiden. Oh, I just bit my tongue. Sorry. A number of warriors are gathered around the Crimson Maiden. They all seem to be speaking about problems in the Dominion. The Crimson Attendant watches over his charge wordlessly, but pride lurks in his expression.
Blight hugs his child close. You can hear him murmuring, I swear I'll make Melanie happy. You wonder what he will tell the child about her mother, the Onyx Maiden, and the island where she was born. 